no matter how just or how legal a particular cause might be, interfering in another country's affairs cannot be justified. It's a matter of sovereignty. On the other hand, and there's always another hand here, uh, some argue that intervening in defense of human rights can outweigh a country's right to sovereignty. Doing the right thing is always the right thing. The real answer to the intervention versus non-intervention question can usually be summed up in two short words. It depends. When it comes down to it, U.S. presidents have routinely chosen to intervene abroad in many conflicts, and the debate rages on. Definitely rages on. We've seen public support for engagement in places like Syria, wax, then wane. Putting public whims aside, would taking a more hands-off approach help us, or would it hurt us? I spoke with Cliff May. He's president of the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, which tends to be center-right. Cliff, when it comes to international affairs, why so often do U.S. presidents and sometimes the Congress feel this um, inertia to get involved in foreign conflicts that maybe don't directly impact us? Because it is a very hard question when we intervene and when we don't intervene. Uh, people like to say America shouldn't be uh, the policeman of the world. Mm -hmm. At the same time, if America is not the policeman of the world, understand, there will be no cop on the beat whatsoever. And when there's no cop on the beat, you know what happens to the neighborhood. So it's up to the U.S. because there's really nobody else who can do that kind of job and say, from a military point of view, we are going to stop this from happening or we are going to support and save these people over here. doesn't mean all the decisions are right. Are we right to go into Lebanon, into a Libya? Uh, under uh, President Obama? Will we right to go into Afghanistan uh, under President Bush? Strategically, and I mean the word strategically uh, to be thought about, it is hard to say which battles we should fight, which battles we should lead. Seems like what you're saying to me is if we do want to retain, you know, at the same time, while a lot of people feel like we have overextended ourselves, we've stuck our nose in things that aren't on our business, that we also want to retain our supremacy, our dominance in the world, and it seems to me like you're saying that those two are kind of inextricably linked. Yes, but I would define it a little differently. I don't okay. think the, the point is for us to be dominant. Uh, I think the point is who is going to shoulder responsibility in the world to make sure that the bad guys out there, and there are plenty of them, don't simply take over. But I mean most Americans want to be number one, and it sounds like what you're saying is that's part of the equation. It, maybe it is, but I think I think most a lot of Americans want to be number one on the football field or in the, in the baseball park, but not necessarily in the world. On the other hand, I also think that the United States has an obligation. There are responsibilities that if we do not shoulder, nobody else will, will or at least nobody else who is in any way uh, has our values, values of freedom, values of prosperity. If you look at what the Chinese are doing in a lot of parts of the world right now, I don't think it's a good thing, and I don't think we want them to continue along that road. We'd like to have peacefully coexist with them. We'd like to trade with them, maybe compete with them, but we don't want them to be the military, the dominant military power in the world. I don't think this should be a matter of ego, but I do think we have certain responsibilities in the world to shoulder because nobody else good can. We looked back the last several hundred years. I'm wondering, looking to the next 50, 100 years, uh, based on your assessment, it sounds like while the players, while the, you know, at the moment conditions might change, the dynamics of whether to intervene or not really aren't changing anytime soon. Con if you look back in history, and I think it's worth doing, you find that conflict is, is the natural state of man. It is not unnatural. Peace is something that breaks out between conflicts. And if you don't handle the peace right, guess what happens? You end up in another conflict sooner rather than later. So you have the what we now call the, the First World War. It ended, and 20 years later, the same adversaries were fighting again. The British decided after World War I, we don't need to rearm again. Everything's fine. The Germans said, yes, we do. And, and only, only Winston Churchill said, don't you understand what's happening? Pretty soon the Germans, the Nazis, will have military superiority over us, and they will attack Europe, which they did, and the French will not be able to withstand that, and the Polish will not be able to withstand that, and the Czechs will not be able to withstand that, and we won't either. And World War II could have been lost. There was nothing inevitable about our winning. 